Welcome to the Weber Cup at the Barnsley Metrodome. It's the closing stages in a race to 17, and the score is 16-14. Yes, it is Weber Cup endgame. A surge of blue on the leaderboard means that Europe are now just a point away from victory. Just one solitary point after a real charge in this final session. Let's take a look back at what's happened so far here in Weber Cup 14. Team Europe returned with a fresh look this season, a new captain and a new player as they attempted to revenge their defeat last year. I think we just need to go and fight and take that win and so then how good we are. I think we're a lot more up for this year, a lot more competitive. We're all made sure we're in great form going into this and we're going to have nothing left on the line when it comes out of this event. We're going to give everything. It was embarrassing last year and we want them to feel like we felt last year so yeah we want we, we want to put them down. We have a really good team and uh, of course the US guys are good too and they come in with uh, the, the two years the two last years victory so of course they think they're gonna walk away with this one too but uh, oh, we, we want something else we're gonna stop them for sure. The USA team remained unchanged as they returned to defend their title. Oh, we always want to win. There's no lack of uh, desire with our team. We're a highly competitive team, whether um, for medals, for tour titles, for, for pride. All of that's plenty for us to, uh, to put everything we have out on the line every time we play. We want to make sure that uh, we retain the Weber Cup. We want to show uh, the Europeans, we want to show the world that you know, we have the best team in the world. When you put on the colors for your country, you never want to disappoint your country, you never want to disappoint your teammates, and it's just something that means a lot to us. And, uh, you know, it, it's not any different this year. I don't think there's any pressure to win the, the third title in a row, it's just the pressure to win, period. You know, what, it doesn't matter who we'd be bowling against, you know, this year, they have a little bit different team. Um, that, that doesn't matter, we, you know, we just want to win. And uh, no matter if it's the third title in a row or the hundredth title in a row, we, we want to win. The Europeans started well, winning the Baker match, but Team USA responded with some top-class bowling and two back-to-back -back perfect games. They soon held a 5-1 lead and the Europeans were struggling. However, Team Europe came back refreshed and got the better of sessions two and three. The Americans just wouldn't let them take the lead though and it was nip and tuck all the way. They looked like very strong contenders. Last time, we joined the action with the scores level at 14 apiece. First up, it was Dominic Barrett and Bill O'Neill. Despite both players getting four spares, it was a run of five strikes that helped the European take the point and move a step towards Weber Cup victory. Then, Martin Larson and Tommy Jones went head-to-head. -head. Both players struggled. The European had an open frame on his first throw, and then the American suffered two open frames. The match was very tight. Larson needed just nine pins in his last throw, and the Swede held his nerve for another point for Team Europe. Here's what's happened in this final session. Team USA fought back with a couple of wins, but since then Europe have been so strong. Stuart Williams versus Chris Barnes is the last scheduled singles match, but if the USA win this match, then it goes to a captain's pick game and potentially a team match as well. However, if Stuart Williams can beat Chris Barnes, the Weber Cup belongs to Team Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the arena, representing Team Europe, Stuart Williams. And now representing Team USA, Chris Barnes. Not long to go until the match starts. Chris Stewart, if I could have a quick word. Chris, I'll start with you. We know you as a man who, when the time is right, likes a laugh and a joke, but you came in then with your game face on. You look like you're taking this in a very serious manner. Our right, back shirt against the wall. We have to win or we go home. How do you assess the state of the lane and your chances, chances in this game? Well, they just re-oiled them again, so um, 
there won't be a whole lot of help, but we don't have to follow anybody either. So whoever makes the best shots probably win. Okay, Chris, good luck. Stuart, you have the chance to win the Weber Cup for Europe. How does that feel? <laughs> Feels pretty good. I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's, hopefully it'll feel really good in the 10th frame. So we'll see. It's a long game. Hope that was almost the first answer I've ever had with no words in it. <laughs> we'll see. It's uh, 10 frames to go, so that's the main thing. We've just got just to focus on trying to make as many good shots as I can, and hopefully the breaks go my way, so we'll see. What has the team said to each other about this situation? I know you've been so close throughout this Weber Cup. What have you guys been saying now that it's come down to the business end of the tournament? To be honest, I only just came down from the practice lanes. I mean, Martin put in a great show there that last game, and he just, he just told me to go out and have fun and try and win this last point for the team. Stuart, thanks very much indeed. There you go, Stuart Williams and Chris Barnes. It is the business end of the Weber Cup. Can he win it for Team Europe? Or will Chris Barnes prolong this excitement here in Barnsley? Over to Cass Edwards and Andy Bodfish. So many permutations, so many ifs and buts along the way, but let's keep it simple. If Stu Williams beats Chris Barnes here, Europe have won the Weber Cup for the first time since 2010, Cass. Yes, a uh, big responsibility on the shoulders of Stu Williams. Likewise, uh, Chris Barnes, who, as Tony Wright said, as Chris Barnes has got his serious face on. I don't think I've ever seen him look so serious in all the years that he's been coming here to Barnsley for the Weber Cup. Exciting times here with possibilities for Stuart Williams to uh, put some glory on his CV. But the European fans won't be getting too far ahead of themselves because Stu has already been beaten in a singles match earlier in this session. It was the singles opener, match 26, when Bill O'Neill was on course for his perfect game. Ended with a, a 2.89 and Williams down in the 180s himself. So he's had a bit of time to reflect on that particular humbling, but. Well, what an opportunity for the lad from Northern England. Spends uh, half of his time over in Arizona now in the United States with the opportunity to bite the hand that feeds him and the opportunity to win a sixth Weber Cup for Team Europe. Stu Williams hasn't won a singles match thus far in the 2013 Weber Cup. He's played four, he's lost four. If he wins this, he will win the Weber Cup, though, for Europe. Standing in his way, America's skipper, Chris Barnes. Don't think Barnes expected this session to pan out like this. You just wonder if he fancied winning it for the US. Now... It's a face-saving operation. Strike with the opening ball. And that's how to, well, keep the wolf from the door, so to speak. First blood for the American captain. Superman himself. The number one player ranked in the world this particular year. And it's up to the man from... Ellesmere Port in the northwest of England to try and beat him. Stu Williams following Barnes' strike with one of his own. A few more of those. And Team Europe will be very happy indeed. Yeah, Stu keeping his shot quite straight to start with on this fresh hole, but getting lots of reaction in the back end. And we didn't like to have another ten of those. Chris Barnes, not been involved since the Baker game that opened this session. Ooh, first spare. Crikey, and how far that was out of the pocket. This one's hooked up on the drive part of the lane, right through the head pin. Just leaves that uh, six pin standing, so it can only be a spare. 
And already Barnes looks disappointed because he had the opportunity to shoot two strikes in a row and put pressure on Williams. They will make that spare. First ball was heading for a Brooklyn, actually. So, Stu Williams, who opened with a strike, already with a chance to get Europe's noses in front in potentially the final match of Weber Cup 2013. Yes, a, a Rolls reserve reversal in the uh, pressure as Williams can hit two strikes here and take an early lead. No, not that time. Just a little bit too tight, wasn't it? A little bit left of the mark and it's gone high through the head. Pin, he's made a spare out of this because the seven pin's gone. So it can only be a spare in frame two. He'll be disappointed with that, as Barnes was with his second shot. Safely does it, though, with that spare. And so, with the scores all level, it's an eight-frame game. Lots of strikes and spares for Williams in the event, but six open frames and no victories in his singles so far. So... We're hoping to reverse that role just for one game. Been beaten, Stu, by Bill O'Neill first out, then Tommy Jones got the better of him twice. And Bill O'Neill again with that 2-8-9 game to open up the singles in this final session. Chris Barnes strikes again. That's two from three for him. And how hard and fast was that? And very straight as well. Not venturing near the outside of the lane, just playing the oil, keeping it straight. Right into the 1 3 pocket, carrying all 10. Puts just a little bit of pressure back here on Williams, the man who's following. Needs a strike just to stay level. Those maximums are what, what both players will end up with if they keep striking all the way through. Oh, Stu gave that a look. I'm not sure he was completely 100% happy with that release. Tried to stare it down, but he leaves the spare again. Cool. Look at the six-pin jump around that 10. Yeah, the big look of disappointment on his face. It wasn't that bad. Both players playing reasonably straight down the lane. Not looking for too much hook. Oh, that'll do for the spare. Just falls behind on the maximum score. Welcome back to Weber Cup 14 from the Barnsley Metrodome. We're reaching the conclusion of this season. The Europeans lead 16-14 in the race to 17. Stu Williams is now playing Chris Barnes in this singles clash. If the Europeans win this match, they will lift this season's trophy. If Team USA take the win, action will continue in a captain's pick game. Let's head back over to your commentators, Cass Edwards and Andy Bodfish. Uh, he's looking pretty smooth, he's looking pretty comfortable here, he's America's captain. He doesn't want to hear the celebrations for Team Europe ringing around the Barnsley Metrodome just yet. Here you can see how straight Chris is actually throwing this ball. It just turns up a few boards at the end. And absolutely, oh well, look at the, <laughs> look, at the look on Chris Barnes' face. Takes some of that, two strikes in a row. Yeah, three from four as well. Stuart Williams, just one from three. Yeah, that brings up the average. Get in there, Stu. Yeah, good looking shot, carries all ten. Hangs himself in there. 
just 11 pins difference in the maximum score. Cracky, there's pressure on both of these bowlers to shoot strikes every frame because if they don't, one could so easily slip behind the other opponent's score. Barnes sitting on two in a row. Frame five. Turkey! Chris Barnes and the United States are not going down without a fight here. Yeah, this was a very big ball and uh, you could tell by the body language as uh, on Chris. As this one went in, it's a little bit light. It's hit them thin, it's made them spin. And it's gone three in a row. Now convincing himself that he's got to get a really good strike next time to go for four and then possibly five. Really wants to throw the gauntlet down for Stu Williams to pick up and challenge. No. He's keeping remarkably calm in the circumstances. Oh, well. One of uh, Stuart's fans just calling out to him oh. there and uh, put the brakes on. Really didn't need this now. He's going to have to go back and regroup, but his mind must have been for a fraction of a second elsewhere. What a deep breath that is. Really has to strike here. or oh, his maximum will go down even further. And Barnes is on a bit of a roll with three in a row. Stu getting himself back in the zone and back in the pocket too with his double. Yes, great looking shot from uh, Stu Williams. That uh, ball really hit hard in the pocket and the six pin slaps the face of the ten and have some of that. Kicks out all ten pins for a double. And here we are. Stuart Williams score. Maximum 269 if he can strike out. And we are at the halfway stage. Chris Barnes ended up winning the deciding point for the United States two years ago when we came down to a captain's pick match. Can't, though, find the four bagger. Well, used a bit of width here and got caught up in the lane oil. Fortunate just to break up and leave just a couple of pins standing. It's the two and the five. And we have seen this two pin chopped off this five before. So he's got to be pretty accurate, hard and straight. And that's the way to get it. Quite looking spare, but uh, he needed to keep on the strikes. Chance for Williams to come back. Yeah, that's helped Stu out. Steps up. Working off two strikes in a row. Just don't think too far ahead, Stu. No, I just think he's going through his mental preparation. Close your eyes, take a really deep breath. Get rid of the air and then set your sights on that one three pocket. OK, little full start. It's not going to worry about that. He'll regroup. May just have been that one of his fingers slipped in the finger hole of the thumb. Just didn't feel snug as he pushed the ball away. So we're ready to go again. And this has to be a big frame. Working two strikes in a row. Stuart Williams strikes again. That is wonderful composure from Stuart Williams. He had a fair bit to contend with there. He reset, he waited until he was ready, and then he delivered the hammer. Stuart Williams and Europe are in the lead. At this stage, if they both strike out, it will be victory for Team Europe. 
pressure on Barnes. Working on a spare. Was a bit wayward with his strike shot in the last frame. Seventh frame here. Strike for Barnes. Clean as you like through the head pin. And yeah, they're still very much in this, are the USA. Five strikes out of seven frames for Barnes. This is a much better shot. Gets right in the zone, buries it in the 1-3 pocket and carries all ten. He's still got work to do. He needs to double up on that and probably go for three as well. Europe have up their singles average over the course of the final session. Mika Koivinyemi, Tom Barrett and Martin Larson with that victory last time out over TJ Tommy Jones. It's been Europe's best session in terms of singles points one. Looking for four in a row, and we'll take them nicely. How about that? The roof comes off here with the Metrodome. That maximum of 269 for Stu Williams as we move into the eighth frame. Can he make it? Can he win the Weber Cup for Europe? Well, there's a lot of people in here think that he can, willing him on. He's lined up in the pocket. He's looking pretty cool and relaxed. Both professional star bowlers on the PBA Tour in the United States. And the American captain is looking to make a double if he can. Oh, and makes it. Dear, oh dear, the fight is on. Chris Barnes, consummate professional. Never looks phased, does he? Never outwardly gives a sign that he's affected by too much. Remains very much in the zone, concentrating on his bowling, concentrating on the lane, concentrating on the task ahead. And he's carrying that right through this 31st match of the 14th Weber Cup. Yeah, that really had to be a strike. And he was using the full width of the lane, started to really Get his ball hooking now from the outside boards, coming back into the pocket. But this man, Stu Williams, the only, or oh, the first UK bowler to win a PBA Tour in the States, working four strikes in a row, looking for five and looking to set up. Victory for Europe. Yes! Oh, they're getting the breaks at the end here. Stu Williams loves that. The crowd do too. They're on their feet inside the Metrodome. Is this to be victory for Europe? Well, what a great looking shot that was. It left the 10 pin, but there's some flying pins around and Stu Williams does. Well, it's a soft shoe shuffle, isn't it? Round the approach and the skipper loves that as well. And the only man that's not smiling is Tommy Jones yeah. sitting T close by. <laughs> TJ less so. It looks a pretty good game on paper. Is there any reason why he can't keep striking and secure victory here for Team Europe in the Weber Cup? Well, knowing Tommy Jones, he will be blaming himself for letting this slip out of the United States grass with those uh, two open frames at the start of match 30 against Martin Larson. But that's history now. Let's not get too excited. There is only still 11 pins in this game. It's only going to take Barnes to strike and Williams not to, to tighten it right down to uh, almost all square. Foundation frame for Chris Barnes. Oh dear, oh dear, he's knocked the 10 pin out. And look at the disappointment on his face. He can't believe the reaction he got off that lane from that ball. Is that the moment when Chris Barnes and the United States relinquish their grip on the Weber Cup? They've won the last two editions. Is the trophy returning to Europe. Just has to make his spare. He can do mo no more than that and just hope that the 10th frame is good to him. Well, he can do no more. 
Stuart Barnes, uh, uh, Stuart uh, Williams can do. Five in a row and looking for a six pack. And if he makes it, I'm sure there'll be a, a few six packs tonight in the European uh, camp. Six strike from eight frames for Stu Williams. It's looking like the kind of form good enough to win the cup. Europe have that single point tantalizingly in reach. Yes! Another strike for Stu Williams. And they are dreaming about lifting the Weber Cup now. Both Team Europe and the diehards in the crowd at the Metrodome. What a great looking shot this is. Absolutely flash in the pocket. Rings, 10 pins and six in a row. And well, look at Stu Williams. You know what it means to him. Dear, oh dear. Welcome back. The pressure is on Chris Barnes to win this match to help keep the Americans' Weber Cup dreams alive. Back over to your commentary team of Cass Edwards and Andy Bodfish. Chris Barnes now. Frame 10. Strikes all the way. Nothing less will do. Well, that's one of them gone. Yeah, that's uh, all he can do. Just uh, got to ring two more for that uh, 237, which likely won't be enough. It would be only a third European victory in the last eight editions of the Weber Cup if Stu Williams can keep calm. One strike down, already in the tenth. No, no. He knows, doesn't he? He knows the Weber Cup is heading back across the Atlantic. Yes, the look on his face uh, just about summed it up. He leaves a tempin standing in the corner. He's going to get out of the way. 227 from the American captain. Congratulates uh, Stu Williams there. So, the man from Ellesmere Port, just to bring Europe home. No strike there. Eight down. It's good enough for victory. Wonderful scenes inside the Barnsley Metrodome. Stu Williams whose singles record left so much to be desired across these uh, Weber Cup sessions as the drama built, as the tension reigned inside the Metrodome. Stu Williams delivered what it takes to bring the Weber Cup back to Europe. Oh, finishes like that too. Just fantastic. The United States won the first three editions of the Weber Cup. Then it was Europe taking the next three. Three more for the US. Two for Europe in 2009 and 2010. 2011 and 2012 went the United States way. But Team Europe have their hands back on the Weber Cup for the first time in three years. Going into the final session, Europe had a 13-11 lead, which they rammed home. Singles victories for Kovanyemi, Barrett, Larson, and finally Stu Williams, three on the spin, have brought the Weber Cup back to Europe. 
Time for the presentation for the 2013 Weber Cup. Team Europe about to lift the trophy. Before that, let's have a quick word with them. Mika, congratulations. What a wonderful performance. How proud are you of your team? I'm, I'm more than proud for my guys. It's, it's great teamwork, whole, whole weekend. Uh, we get behind a lot on Friday night. We never give up. We work hard. We try to figure out things, and guys are making great shots when they need it. Now, let's have a, a quick word about Stuart Williams alongside you. Let me ask you, Mika, first, how proud you are, because that was a wonderful performance against one of the world's best bowlers. Yeah, I think we were underdog coming out here, but we saw that in bowling, when you work hard, you work as a team, anything is possible. Stuart, how did it feel being the man to win it for Team Europe? Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, I... I yeah, I'm a bit lost for words at the minute. That's a rarity. <laughs> it is a rarity, ladies and gentlemen. Stuart Williams lost for words. Well, you are a man who has a knack of getting the crowd going, and you really did in that final game, didn't you? They seemed to kind of G you up and help you along. Yeah, once I got that strike in the fifth frame, I knew the crowd would... They were a little worried. They thought, here we go again. The other guy's going to shoot 280, and Stuart's going to bowl 180 again. <laughs> But uh, once I got the double, it relaxed me a little bit because I felt pretty confident with the line I was playing and everything else. And it looked a little bit more difficult where Chris was playing, so I had a little bit more room. And, um, and then the crowd started going, and I, it, was, it was the best. Well, congratulations to you and to all the team. Mickey, are you ready to lift the trophy? Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please extend a huge warm welcome to the stage. One of England's top bowlers of all time. She's now a Hall of Famer as well. Please welcome Kirsten Penny. The winners of Weber Cup 14, Team Europe. Well, it's been a great event as we let the European team celebrate. Let's look back on some of the magic moments of this Weber Cup. We began with eight champions of the game playing for one of the biggest titles in the sports. And in the opening session, we were treated to some record-breaking action. Chris Barnes played Don Barris in the second match of the night and the American was on fine form. We join the action as he takes to the lane for the 10th frame. Nine strikes in a row, everybody's holding their breath. Right now, it is all about Chris Barnes. Oh, he gave it a look, but they all tumbled, and this is on. <laughs> He's got a big smile on his face. This was slightly fortunate, but it's the 10th frame. And look how light that is on the head pin. And he's got some mix. The five pin was the last to go. And this is so important for he him. He stared it down, didn't he? He stared that down. One down, two to go. Come on, Chris, make this a good one. Can he do it? Oh. We're one bowl away. Tommy Jones has done it three times here at the Metrodome. Paul Moore, back in 2006, broke the mould. But now it is Chris Barnes, the daddy of this United States team. With a chance to write his name in Weber Cup history. To add another chapter. Just gathering his thoughts. One look at the uh, pins down the far end. A nice deep breath. He's got 11 strikes in a row behind him. This for 300. It's Chris Barnes. Is it a perfect game? Yes, it is. What a start to this Weber Cup. In the opening singles match, there is a standing ovation for Chris Barnes. He was perfect there. He was brilliant. Chris Barnes with a perfect game. Superman rules. Superman smiles. This is the final shot. He's laid it out. He's hit his mark. 
the speed's good, the rotation is good, and the chain reaction in the back end is just fantastic. 12 great strikes, and look at the body reaction there. Everybody just loves this man and his bowling. Paul Moore, Tommy Jones, and now Chris Barnes. Perfect men at the Weber Cup. In the very next match, Mika Koivinyemi and Tommy Jones went head-to-head, -head, and it was another memorable game. We join the action as Mr. 300 steps up for the ninth frame. Here a pin drop in the Metrodome. Well, I'm looking for 10 pins to be heard drop with this ball. Oh, oh, he's got it. It's nine from nine. We are in uncharted territory in terms of the Weber Cup here. Excuse me for laughing, but that was a Brooklyn strike. He's tucked this ball left of his target by a long way. And look at that. He's crossed the head pin, wrong side, trips the six and makes it nine strikes in a row. <laughs> oh, lucky man is... Tommy Jones, and he knows it, but he won't care. As long as they tumble, no need to grumble. <laughs> I, I talked about that one lucky strike, and that was definitely the one. Dear, oh dear. Tommy knows it that? as well, doesn't he? He knows it. And so, and so does Mika. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's uh, he needing to stay focused. Something that he seemingly failed to do there. Yeah, it's all over. He's having a laugh. He's got a split in the uh, in the tenth frame. That's the four seven ten. It's a makeable split, but uh, I think he'll probably just want to get this one out of the way and stand aside to let Mika uh, to let uh, Tommy shoot his uh, next couple of shots. Yeah, sit back and enjoy like the rest of us are doing. Two twenty five. Not a bad score for Mika. Average to say the least. But be below par for this uh, high-scoring lane. Now let's just uh, sit back and watch Mr. 300. See if he can do it again. <sighs> this extraordinary sequence of successive strikes from the Americans. Chris Barnes, now Tommy Jones. Mr. 300 has three more for another perfect game. Oh, yes. I'm still watching. <laughs> Strike number 10 in a row for Tommy Jones. 2007, 2008, 2009, nearly in 2012. As I said on the film Poltergeist, he's back. Just can't imagine two 300s back to back. Yeah, it's, extra same, it's extraordinary. In the same tournament on television. History in the making, possibly. Come on, Tommy. 11 from 11 for Tommy. Yes, it is. Whoa. We are witnessing something absolutely special here. You actually heard Tommy shout hook. Now, this one has just gone wide of his mark. Great reaction in the back end. Not perfect in the pocket, but I've got another strike, and that's 11 in a row for me, and I'm a very, very happy man. Paul Moore, 2006. Tommy Jones, 07, 08, 09. Chris Barnes, already once in this Weber Cup 2013. That was in the previous match. We'll take another perfect game. So would Tommy. Keep calm, man. Focus. Just buried this one in the 1-3 pocket, Tommy. And you've got another 300, one more hopes. Mr. 300, has he done it again? Of course he has! Tommy Jones! Perfect game, number four in the Weber Cup. It's the second we've seen tonight, the opening night of the 2013 Weber Cup, and we have seen two perfect games. What is going on, Cass? This is bowling of the very highest order. 
I'm almost lost for words. Mika bowled not a bad game for 225, but Tommy Jones, Mr. 300, has done it yet again. Team Europe fought back and the momentum was on their side. Team captain Mika Koivin Yemi and Tommy Jones went head to head again in a crucial match. And it was a big turning point in this year's event. We join the action as the American takes to the lane for a much needed strike on his last throw of frame 10. Tommy can't close out with three in a row. Knocks eight down, but not enough here. And Mika Kruvenyemi to get a point back on the board for Europe. The situation was, had Tommy struck there for three in a row, he would have forced Mika Kruvenyemi to get a strike on the first ball. As it happens now, a spare and a strike will be good enough for a score of 215, and doesn't Tommy know it? And of course, a strike first time for Mika, and it's all over. But uh, he needs to make 20 pins. Mika Koivinyemi for European points. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, that situ pesky seven pin again, isn't it? Oh. Situation is that he has to make the spare here. That will leave him. Uh, a strike to win on the fill ball. But then it'll be a, a single pin victory. It doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> but if he shoots nine, we'll have a tie. Oh, dear, oh, dear. So, disappointed uh, look on Mika's face. It has to make the spare here. Hard and straight. Who misses single pins? Well, we have seen single pins miss before. Yeah, he's got it. He liked it. <laughs> Mika Kovinyemi for Europe. A strike to win, a nine will be a tie, and then there would be a two-frame roll-off, which is all quite interesting. Jones has played his sort of get-out-of-jail card here and put the pressure right back on Mika. It has to be a strike for victory. Europe's captain with a big, big ball here. Mika Koivin, yay me! Yes! What about that? Oh, the Metrodam absolutely erupts it with a great looking shot from the European captain. The Moose has won. Jones has been defeated. Just a fantastic session set up here. The United States with two victories to start this. Uh, the final round of matches in Weber Cup 2014, but Mika Koivinyemi with a point back on the board. And the momentum stayed with Europe, and this was the winning moment for the team as Stu Williams looked on course to defeat Chris Barnes for the title. Five in a row and looking for a six-pack. And if he makes it, I'm sure there'll be a, a few six-packs tonight in the European... Uh, Camp. Six strike from eight frames for Stu Williams. It's looking like the kind of form good enough to win the cup. Europe have that single point tantalizingly in reach. Yes! Another strike for Stu Williams. And they are dreaming about lifting the Weber Cup now. Both Team Europe and the diehards in the crowd at the Metrodome. What a great looking shot this is. Absolutely flash in the pocket. Rings, ten pins and six in a row. And, well, look at Stu Williams. You know what it means to him. Dear, oh dear. And we all know what happened after that. Chris Barnes missed that all-important strike and the trophy was claimed by the Europeans. It's been one of the most exciting ever Weber Cups and we crown new champions here in Barnsley. Team Europe claimed Weber Cup 14.
six channels of the biggest sporting action and reaction.